Let's look at the pipes and filters pattern. Now, this is called pipes and filters because um, I, I don't know whether it's come from chemistry or what it is, but uh, it, it describes the essence of the thing. The uh, problem, the context is that data can arrive in uh, different formats, um, and the whole thing needs to be uh, rendered in the similar format. Now this can happen in uh, some systems where there's different types of input and it needs to be uh, reformatted to some sort of a commonality. Um, some kind of transaction systems, I guess, uh, you know, financial transaction systems. But the problem is that we need to apply a series of ordered but independent operations in order to get to the, the uh, state that we want. So the forces, we need to maintain the precise order of the transformations. Um, we don't need to apply all of the transformations, but when we do apply them, they need to be in. You know, this comes before that uh, type of sequence. We need to preserve the order of shared data among the operations. Um, so, yeah, we, it just means that, that the data needs to go into some operations in a known state. We can't, we can't have capricious data about the place. Uh, we can consider the introduction of parallelism. Um, there are some circumstances where that can be used, um, so we can we can uh, think about that. We can distribute the process into similar amounts along one's all-step operations. Um, so we could have different servers doing. You know, we we could actually physically shift the data from one server to another, and each server mount a different operation, if it's appropriate. <coughs> Improvements in performance, uh, generally uh, directly related to the improvements in, in uh, processing time. Now the solution is to implement the transformations using a series of filter components where each filter does a specific operation and uh, there are pipes, usually files, between these different filter operations. So if you can imagine um, some data coming in from a range of um, gauges. Um, the gauges might have might have been installed at different times. You might have a system where it, it was like, for example, a metropolitan water supply system. The gauges on the domestic taps um, are from different manufacturers. They're built at different times. Uh, they give back data at different formats um, and and. Uh, not only different formats but different contents. Well, somehow it all has to be made useful, so all the input has to be transformed in some fashion into something that the, the system can deal with. Now these transformations, each different format has to be transformed. And the sequence in doing that could have some commonalities and some separate. So how you do that is through this pipes and filters so that you finish up with um, the one common format in the end. Uh, another example that I used uh, earlier in a different uh, lecture was in this increasing number of um, medical imaging clinics where there are a number of medical imaging devices such as x-ray, ultrasound, um, chromatography, um, the radiography, some other variety of um, uh, examining uh, imaging type thing. They all put out different uh, formats, um, but there are some circumstances where we need to have a common format uh, to enable to to enable them to be uh, transmitted or shared or, or um, given to the hospital or something of that nature. Even sometimes just to print them. Now those uh, different imaging formats would need some sort of conversion, and usually the way of converting them would be through this um, uh, archetype pattern of uh, pipes and filters. Uh, the design of pipes and filters, you see it there in, in UML, where um, there's simply a, a collection of um, a collection of filters, really. Now you get the input, it goes through some sort of a scanner, uh, then through a parser, then through a semantic analyzer, a code generator, um, a Unix pipe, and then to the interpreter. And the, the lines between kind of imply this pipe that connect all these fields together. In a more box and arrows type diagram instead of UML, you can see it there where you have a, um, a source goes through um, 
filter one, filter two before uh, final um, into the final sink, or just go through um, just the one filter. Now they're, they're they're pretty unintelligent looking pictures, but that's about as well as we can diagram them.